Okay, so 52Pi recently sent me this M.2 SATA case for a Raspberry Pi 4, and it's very cool and uh, pretty compact really, but they've sent me a newer case for the Compute Module 4, which uses the faster NVMe drives, and this case is tiny. So let's have a look inside. Screwdrivers, instruction book, and this very, very neat cube, which has GPIO pins on the back, We've got two HDMI connections, two USB 2, USB-C, Ethernet, SD card slot. That's got some little rubber feet on the bottom so it doesn't move around. So, oh, it's not got the screws in yet, so it comes apart. That looks like a Wi-Fi antenna. So it's got quite a big heat sink on it and fan, uh, and it's a PWM fan, so it's basically controlled by temperature, uh, so it will switch off a lot of the time, depending on what you're doing with it. So how do I fit a Compute Module 4 in there? Obviously it's going to go under here. Now my Compute Module 4 is a 2 gig model with a 16 gig eMMC, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, so I'm not going to need the Wi-Fi antenna. So let's take this off. And which way around is the Compute Module 4 going to go? I guess we can work out by the placement of the CPU. Yeah, so the CPU cut out here must mean that it's this way around. So let's line all that up and push down. Yep, that feels in place. So uh, now I need the heat sinks. Looks like there's loads of them in here. Looks like we've doubled up, so we've got two of each probably. And it, of course, depends what components you've got. So I've got less components. Notably, this bit is missing, which must be the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. So we've got cover for the eMMC, cover for the gigabit ethernet, one for the RAM, and for the CPU. Just take off the little plastic covers. Did do a separate video on how CPU paste is more effective, but I'll use these for now. Right, that's all of those off. So let's pop this on nice and straight and put these back on. And I use my little screwdriver kit for that. So I now need to remove the screws on the base to get access to the NVMe slot. I think that's all four, it is. That's a nice solid block. Oh, I need to take this off as well then. Right, so it's just GPIO pins, it just teases apart, I think. Yeah, it does. Can I put it down that way? Yeah, I can. Uh, and let's pop this in to this board. Must be this way around. There we go. And have I got a pin to secure that? One, two, three, four, five. It looks like one of these probably will. So let's pop that screw down. I think this is one of the screws, although it's usually thinner for the M.2. I'll pinch one off my Cytron Maker board. Okay, so that's definitely the right size. Need to pop this back on. Make sure it's nice and straight. Yeah, that all fits together nicely. And pop this bit back on. Okay, it's all together, feels nice and solid. You see we've got a switch here uh, and a little button here. So that's obviously pushing that down and pretty much as you'd expect, short press power on, long press power off. Let's pop that over there and secure the four screws in the top. Oh, that's very cool. Oh, and this is sloped. And we've got some little dip switches on the bottom here. And here's the configuration of the dip switch. So this allows you to write an operating system to the eMMC drive, which I don't do. Uh, and obviously I've got the NVMe drive in there with Raspberry Pi OS already on it. I quite like the fact that all the connectivity is all on the one side. Nice and neat. So let's plug it all in. So full size HDMI. And then we've got USB-C, Ethernet. That is so small. Let's tuck this back a little bit, get it a bit neater and switch on and it's working because it's booted up now i can hear the fan so I'm, i would say it's definitely connected to the five volt gpio pin how do we turn on the fan control uh, so let's try raspberry config performance fan fan gpio fan temperature so let's go with Set temperature in degrees, which the fan turns on. So let's go with 75. 
and let's say OK and just just assume that it's configured that way. OK, well, it hasn't gone off, but I might need to reboot. And after the reboot, the fan isn't on, so it's completely silent at the moment. So it's not going to cut in until it gets to about 75 degrees. So somehow we need to get that to 75 degrees. We could certainly try overclocking. I haven't done a lot of overclocking on a Compute Module 4 because my previous one broke. Let's not worry about the updates for now. Let's open the terminal. sudo nano boot config.txt. I think that's right. Oh, not with sud, but let's try that again. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, I haven't, I can't even remember if I overclocked my CM4 as I didn't really have it for that long. Arm um, frequency, so let's go for 2147, that was always good on a Pi 4. Let's enable that, and over underscore voltage equals, I'm gonna say six, Let's go with force underscore turbo equals one. Let's save that, control X and yes and enter. And then reboot. And let's try adding NeoFetch. Actually, I've probably already got NeoFetch on here because I was using this with the maker board before. Yeah, I have. Yeah, so it's showing us 2.2, two, so we know the overclock has worked. We can see the temperature's on 43 at the moment. So let's play a video. Uh, and let's put it up to whatever resolution it will let us play at. And whilst it's doing that, let's launch PSensor, which I think I would have installed on this already. I haven't. sudo apt install PSensor. PSensor is great for monitoring temperature, but also it, it tells you how hot it got. Oh, so let's install that. Oh, have we crashed? We have crashed. Well, we haven't got too much temperature. Oh, this compute module four is not that good at overclocking. Or have I just got a not enough voltage? Maybe I've not got enough voltage. Right, okay, so I'm gonna have to power it down and increase the over voltage. Okay, so let's get in there quick before anything happens again. Let's just go over the top and go with over voltage of 10. Control X, yes, enter, and then reboot. Okay, so let's try again. sudo apt install p sensor. And yes, let's restore those pages. I've only got two gig of RAM on this, so obviously the browser is a, a bit of a strain. Should be using Puffin browser really, because it would definitely cope with it better, but then it's probably not gonna get my temperature up very high. So that would be installed now. I might need to run a stress test to get the fan to come on. Yeah, it is running at 1080. 61 degree, oh, it's getting there. It probably will get there. Have I got, I've, I'll find a longer video. Yeah, here we are. So I can just leave this going as it's an hour and a half. Will it let me go any higher on the resolution? No, it definitely only lets me go to 1080. So yeah, let's just leave that playing. So it's got up to 68, 69 degrees P sensor has said that it's got up to. The fan definitely hasn't come on yet, but it is definitely climbing up. I've, uh, <laughs> I've launched, lever office uh, at the same time as well. So that's obviously gonna make it come on quicker. Or, and I've got, how many, how many versions? I've got several versions open. Okay, yeah, it's climbing up now. That's what we wanted anyway. So let's not worry about how many things are, are being launched at the moment. Let's get P-Sensor back on the screen. 71 degrees, CPU usage 96%, free memory. Well, it looks like it's not using any more memory, but I'm sure that's misreporting it. Come on, it seems to be going down in temperature already. How's it managing that? The fan, I don't think the fan's on. Let me have a look if I shine a torch in there in case it's going really slow. Oh, I can hear the fan on. The fan is on. Oh, so it's cooling itself already. Yeah, the fan's definitely on, but it's running at a very, very low speed. So I can't, I can't hear it. I have to put it right up to my ear. Okay, so the fan's working anyway. And it's not going to get the 75 like that unless I do some sort of stress test. Ah, I was close. sudo apt install stress. And pip install stress berry. I think I might need to restart it. 
So nothing's happening at the moment, no fan running. Uh, we're at 63 degrees, but it's still trying to find a stable baseline temperature. Once it finds that, it will start to stress it out and uh, we should get the fan coming on pretty soon. Okay, so it started to go at 2148 now. Uh, we're only using 2.4 watts, so very little power, or 2.7, 5.4, there you go, that's better. So now it's using all four cores. Still no fan, but we are 74 degrees. Oh, it's on. So the fan's staying on, but it's keeping the temperature at 74, 75 nicely. Yeah, it's not that loud at all, considering how small it is. And again, obviously I'm maxing this out, so it's bound to be going hotter and uh, working the fan faster. Oh, you can see the speed as well at 5,000 RPM. Yeah, it's very good. It hasn't let it go over 76. It's such a small little device, but it's nice and solid. And so you could just put it in a pocket and carry it around. A real portable PC. Okay, fan's gone off now. Yeah, I'm happy that the fan's working and I'm happy that it's doing a good job. Let's plug in a second monitor. Just about reaches. Let's tuck my uh, capture device back. And what's it gonna do? Nothing yet. Oh yeah, it is there, it's just grey. Not, <laughs> not sure why, it's, why is it just grey? Let's move this over. Oh yeah, it is there. So HDMI 1, HDMI 2. So I need to just switch these two around. So now we have a pocketable dual monitor mini PC. Uh, obviously you can't pocket the, uh, the monitors, but if you're taking it to another destination, just plugging it in, it's such a small item to be able to carry around. And you could have a load of data on there on an NVMe drive. Yeah, really impressed with that. So it's later on in the day. I uh, was just editing the rest of the video and I was just finishing up and then I realized that I haven't done a speed test. So let's switch it on and see how good a results we get. So let's launch Raspberry Pi Diagnostics and I run three tests as I usually do. So I take the best random read speed, which is this bottom one here, 36,008. So let's get rid of these two. I'm happy to compare these because you, you wouldn't buy one or the other because they're so different. The maker board is all about the maker side of it and this is all about miniaturization. So sequential write speed, which I'm not too worried about, was faster by a little bit on the Cytron, 383,251 versus 378,820. Random write speed was quite a bit faster on the cube. So we've got 41,795 on the cube and 29,952 on the maker board. And random read speed, the one I find the most important, the cube wins again, 36,008 versus 31,207. Very nice speeds coming from this. Uh, I've said it before that the CM4 is more capable than a Raspberry Pi 4 if, if it's just down to speed because of the interface, because it has a PCI Express, uh, which is faster than USB 3, which is the fastest port on a Raspberry Pi 4. So uh, yeah, great results, really impressed with it. Really love it as a little tiny computer. And thanks very much to 52Pi for sending it to me. I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.